plastic pollution reaches far beyond litter in the landfill. From extraction of oil to exporting waste, plastics pollute the air we breathe, the food we eat, and the water we drink. Plastic is everywhere, but where does its life start? What it actually is, is a petroleum-based product. Plastic begins with the oil and gas industry. We extract tons of oil for the purpose of producing plastics, which produces methane and CO2 emissions, smog, and increases the risk of oil and gas leaks. Racialized people are much more likely to be living near these extraction sites. Oil is then made into powders and resins for the plastic manufacturing process. These are then shipped to factories to be turned into plastic products. Sarnia is home to one of the largest clusters of factories in this sector, which means that these communities suffer more from exposure to toxic gases, chemical waste, and air pollution. There are tons of chemicals added to the plastic mixtures that are harmful to the environment and to our health. Plastic plants expose workers to high levels of carcinogenic materials. We see racialized and indigenous people more likely to be working in these factories in very unhealthy working conditions. Not only is plastic consumed when we purchase it, but because our food and drinks are packaged in plastic, we may consume small plastic particles when we eat, drink, or breathe. We're not just talking about the single-use straws, you know, we're talking about plastics that are really um, embedded, uh, intertwined into all of our systems and our products. This is really a cradle-to-grave problem, and grave isn't even the right word, because the point here is that plastics really don't die, right? Plastic doesn't decay, it doesn't die, and it doesn't disappear. All plastic ever made still exists on the planet. This is no life cycle. This is the death spiral, and it's time to get out. <laughs>